Hey kids, this is Mr. Fly here. Welcome to Hertfordshire Triumph where I'm here today to ride this beast, the Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE, an absolutely beautiful looking bike. It's in my favourite genre of retro machines. If you're interested in this bike, stick around and stay tuned. I'll tell you what I think of it. Right, this is literally a first ride review, never ridden one of these before. Uh, first thing I notice when I jump on, one, it's quite a tall old bike, and two, seat's quite hard, but we'll see how we go. It's keyless starting, so I've got the key in my pocket. Let's uh, see how we bring it to life. Here we go, here's the new uh, TFT firing up, look. And then uh, it's doing its little warm-up routine. And hopefully, there we go. We've got to pull the clutch in. Like all tramps, you do pull the clutch in. Right then, let's uh, get this show on the road then. So this particular machine has got one or two little aftermarket extras on, which I'll show you when we do the walk around, but basically is the standard XE. It's got the standard pipe on. It sounds absolutely lovely. Yeah, it's quite a commanding uh, view and position you get here. You do feel quite tall on this bike. I rode here to the dealer on my uh, GS, which of course is another tall, heavy bike. Just because I thought it would kind of set me up in the sort of way of thinking of heavy machines. And this feels really quite different. It's got big, wide handlebars, which feel like they're quite high up. You sort of, you know, to exaggerate, you feel like your hands are up here compared to bikes I'm used to. Lovely thrumming exhaust note. Yeah, she sounds beautiful. No need for an aftermarket exhaust on this one, I think. Right, what I need to do is uh, get out of the way of this vehicle, which is somewhat blocking my view. And we'll go through some of the uh, basics on riding this bike. Right, I'm gonna head off on my uh, favorite test route round here, which is down this way. Yeah, the engine note is uh, absolutely lovely on this course. It's got the 270 degree crank, which uh, Triumph have wisely put on all the new Bonnevilles. It sounds great. It's not very loud, I have to say. I have got my earplugs in, but uh, when you're riding it, it hasn't got an awful lot of volume. So maybe some sort of decat is in order. But it is a lovely thrumming note to it, has to be said. Right, so the practical uh, points on riding the bike there. First thing, as I, as I mentioned, the seat, pretty hard. So yeah, the seat is hard, but it's uh, you know it's long and bench stock, so you can move forward and back on this. There's plenty of room on it, so if you're a tall fella, you're going to find somewhere to get comfortable on this. And this being physically quite a large bike, uh, this machine is going to be great for you if you're uh, on the larger side. I'm not a particularly small fella, uh, sorry, tall fella. I'm only five foot eight with a 32 inch inseam, and uh, I have to say I feel completely comfortable riding this machine. When I put my feet down, I'm kind of on the balls of my feet and it doesn't feel like it's got a lot of weight up the top, so... It's not ponderous in the way that, say, I found the uh, big Triumph Tiger 1200 uh, two weight at the top. I don't feel that on this bike, I'm glad to say. Ah, blue van pulling out on me, nice. Handling-wise, feels very planted, yet, at the same time, you don't have to move the handlebars much to get a big lot of movement on the bike, if that makes sort of sense. In that once it's up for a corner, it feels stable, but it's very easy to chuck around. In fact, for such a big old uh, heavy bike, it's very nimble indeed. Of course, it is uh, a scrambler and it has great scrambler looks. Whether I want to actually take it off-road, I don't know. And whether uh, many owners would actually take a bike of this cost off-road, I don't know but I'm sure it's more than capable of it. This bike, the XE over the XC, is of course the more off-road focused one. It's got slightly uh, longer suspension travel and it's the one to get if you do want to do off-roading. But I also happen to think it's the one that looks better out of the two bikes. So uh, if I had uh, 13 odd grand burning a hole in my pocket, this is the one I'd go for. The other great thing about this comes with uh, heated grips as standard, which I've got turned on today. It's a cold day, it's six degrees out when I'm riding this but my hands are toasty as you like. Also helped by the fact that we've got these uh, sort of grip shields as well, which just get keep the wind off the front of your hands, which uh, keep your hands nice and dry. So I've got a bit of a flappy, 
glove going on there, I do apologise. The mirrors on here, don't like these at all, very stalky, Mickey Mouse like. Seeing these on a lot of bikes these days. I think they'd be gone quite quickly if this was my machine. For something a little uh, a little more subtle, or indeed take them off altogether. Clutch is very light action. Gearbox, as you would expect, very snickable on this brand new machine. No false neutrals, no difficulty uh, changing up or down. Really, really nice. And then, of course, the other thing that's staring me in the face that's different about this bike over other Triumph Bonnevilles that I've ridden is this, the new, uh, the new TFT. It's controlled by uh, this little joystick on the left handlebar, as the previous TFT was on Triumphs. Uh, and it's got sort of a split screen, if you like. So if I press the little joystick, sorry, if I move the joystick, you see, going up and down there, I'm actually changing the settings within this window. And then if you press the mode button, go over to the left here on this little screen, then I can flick through the various riding modes. Let's do that again because it timed out. There we go. So I'm moving the little items there on the left. So it's sort of a sort of a split screen arrangement, if you like. It's one of those jobs where I would need to spend some time with the bike and read the manual properly to understand all the features and functions. And this isn't that sort of review. This is literally a first ride, first impressions review. But it seems fairly intuitive, I'm glad to say. I've got the sun behind me at the moment, and it's not that uh, contrasty the screen, I have to say. I've seen brighter TFTs, but I prefer this presentation by far over the, uh, the way Triumph did their TFTs before, which looked a little bit Fisher pricey to me. This is definitely an improvement. And of course, it's got all sorts of extra features like Bluetooth connectivity. You can control your GoPro and link it up with your phone for some uh, sat nav um, routing advice as well. So, all sorts of extra features on there again. Sadly, beyond the scope of this first ride review, but uh, maybe if I get the chance to do a long term review on one of these, I'll be able to go through some of that. Brakes on here are amazing. Proper Brembo M50 calipers on twin discs at the front here. Just while well, there's nothing behind me, let me just try the rear brake. Uh, rear brake's a bit rubbish to be fair. As I uh, pressed it there, I felt the ABS kick in. No big deal, let's face it, rear brakes on lots of bikes aren't too sharp. I'll just try it again to give it the benefit of the doubt. Oh, actually, it works okay, it's perfectly adequate. Riding position, nice and upright, of course. Uh, my knees feel just under 90 degrees, but very comfortable. My back is up straight. You could ride this for a long time. And I mentioned earlier that the uh, seat is hard. Of course, there are aftermarket seat options available, which may well be softer, I don't know. It's not uncomfortable, don't get me wrong. In terms of the width of the bike, my uh, knees feel quite close together. It's got this lovely tank. I love this uh, green and white um, paint job on here. This is quite muddy. It is a scrambler, so it looks good on here. But my legs don't feel wide apart at all. And given you've got that high level exhaust, just on the right. It doesn't get in the way of your legs at all either, which is nice. Uh, which I, I've noticed is a problem on some previous scramblers. Loads of grunt in this big old 1200cc engine as well. Beautiful through these curves. Just a shame I'm stuck in there. Southeastern traffic as usual. But yeah, a very impressive ride. It feels a bit like uh, I recently rode the Speed Twin. And it feels a bit like that, sort of on steroids, like somebody's taken a bicycle pump and made the speed twin bigger. But it's got a similar shove and go as that bike had. Yeah, I like this a lot. We we'll just see around this car. Here we go, nothing behind. See you down there, sunshine. Bags of grunt out of this engine, as I say. Definitely no lack of power. Beautiful. The only thing I would say when you're at those slightly high speeds that slow down as I'm coming into a 30 zone, you do get quite a lot of wind blast. It is, of course, a naked bike and the front layer is quite small on this. So you are exposed to the wind. If you're not used to riding naked bikes, that might be a bit of a shocker to you. Uh, some of the reviews and things I've read of this bike have talked about it as being a uh, sort of like an adventure bike or a replacement for something like, say, a KTM Super Adventure, a bike that you can go on proper long adventures on. And I completely agree that you could do that with it. But of course, what this doesn't give you, what those other adventure bikes do, is that, uh, it's that wind and weather protection. So if you're doing motorway miles, for example, it might get a bit wearing with the wind blast. It's clean air that's hitting you, it's not a turbulent air. 
but nonetheless that is something this bike doesn't give you that you would get from a more traditional adventure bike what this does however give you is uh, bags more style yeah you have to hang on when you wind her on really nice suspension on it is uh, fully adjustable at the rear Olin stuff uh, and as it I assume this is just uh, adjusted as it comes from the factory and it's in what I call the Goldilocks zone not too hard not too soft it's not all bouncy wallowy means the handling's lovely but at the same time it's uh, sort of so rigid that it's rattling your fillings out I think I'd probably just leave it set as it is Okay, just up here in a minute is uh, one of my favourite spots around here for doing the walk around. So stick around, stay tuned. I'll show you the bike and talk you through the spec. Right, here we are coming up to one of my uh, favourite little walk around points. Uh, I often get asked what I'm doing when I stop here and do my little walk around, so let's try not to upset anyone this time. Right, here we are. Okay, just while I stop here, let's get her into neutral easy to find neutral. I can show you my uh, where my feet are, if I can do that without rolling the bike forward. There we go, look, I'm, uh, I'm on the balls of my feet, both side at 5 for 8 with a 32-inch uh, inseam. So any shorter in the leg than that, you might struggle. I wouldn't want it any taller, I have to say. It's not as tall as, say, the uh, when I rode the Africa Twin Adventure Sport, I found a little bit too tall to be comfortable. Um, I could perfectly happily live with this, but it is a tall old bike. Alrighty, keyless as well, so you just turn her off in the usual way. And here we go, like I say, this one has obviously been uh, well used, this demo bike, it's pretty muddy, but as it's a scrambler, I think it looks good. Uh, but yeah, really lovely bit of styling on this. I think actually the, the extra height and ground clearance just gives it a nice stance that uh, the street scrambler doesn't quite have. Uh, anyway, let me get the, uh, the phone out, the other camera, and I'll uh, talk you through the spec, show you around the bike in the usual way. Okay, here she is then, the uh, Triumph 1200 Scrambler XE. Uh, the way I remember these, which probably Triumph wouldn't like me saying, is XE is the expensive one, XE slightly cheaper. So uh, I'll go through some of the differences uh, in those machines as we go through the spec. But let me just uh, show you around this bike a little bit to start with. Uh, some of the things I like here, even things like the rear end is quite nice on this. I would still put a tail tidy, but I love the way they've got this uh, little short mud guard. looks really good. Uh, the indicators are really nice, but perhaps would be better if they were tucked up on the front of the mud guard there but uh, yeah really nice looking uh, machine and um, this one it's got a couple of extra bits and pieces on it so at the front here we've got these uh, extra um, lights at the front which uh, I think look quite good and are always good to you know aid in you being seen when you're on the bike and we've got the um, the, the headlight guard on here as well other than that I'm pretty sure this is uh, as XE's come. Alright, quick whiz through the spec then, uh, just to let you know what that's about. So I mentioned 1200cc liquid cooled parallel twin, 270 degree crank which gives it that distinctive noise, 89 brake horsepower at 7400 RPM and 110 newton meters of torque at 3950. Again, quite, that's quite nice and low down the rev range, just where you need it for real world riding I think. Uh, the brakes, let me show you those uh, brakes, twin discs at the front and uh, as I mentioned proper Brembo uh, calipers on here, M50 monoblocks and those discs are 320mm. Uh, at the back you've got a single 255mm uh, disc and again with a Brembo caliper. Uh, suspension on the front, massive old forks on here. These are the Showa 47mm uh, upside down uh, forks. 250mm of travel, whereas on the XC they only have 200mm, so 50mm more on the XE. At the back, uh, I mentioned fully adjustable Olin's piggyback type shocks. Here we go, and again, massive amount of travel there. Uh, the rear ones on here, 250mm of travel, and again, the XC only has 200 Still not to be sniffed at. Seat height on here is uh, 800 70 millimeters. The XC is a bit shorter at 840. As I say, I don't find that uh, seat height a problem, and I think actually the tall stance of this bike actually uh, makes it look nicer than, say, the XC or indeed the um, Street Scrambler, which is my sort of previous favourite uh, Triumph Scrambler. This now is definitely one of my favourite of the Bonnevilles. It's a lovely looking bike. Weight on this bike 207 kilograms dry. Um, so pretty weighty, but not 
not hideously so. Uh, tank capacity on here, Let's show you the tank, 16 litres, and it's got this lovely strap that's been sort of inlaid into the tank. And also I love the uh, sort of Monza, Monza style type fuel cap as well, which is lockable under there. So they've done some, again, in the usual way these days for truck, for really nice bits of a sort of attention to detail. Fit and finish on the bike is absolutely superb. Uh, electronics, we've got the fancy new TFT that I showed you. Um, it's got uh, customizable riding modes, including on this one, uh, sort of an off-road pro mode. LED lights, got a USB charging port. Uh, it's got optional Bluetooth for phone um, linkage, as I talked about, for nav and for controlling your GoPro. Uh, what else has it got from a... Uh, electronics point of view. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, it does have, um, I think it's got lean angle sensitive, yes, cornering ABS and traction control uh, on the on this one. The XC doesn't, that's another of the differences. Uh, and price-wise, the uh, the XE here, £12,300 uh, if you buy it without the little extras, and the XC uh, 11,500 so £800 extra for this one you're getting the lean angle sensitive ABS and traction control the uh, extra uh, travel um, on the suspension uh, I think actually it's probably if you can take the extra height then this is the one to have I just think it looks really really beautiful alrighty I think that's uh, that's it for the spec and for wandering around in circles uh, and people are starting to wonder what I'm doing so I'm going to uh, jump back on and uh, ride a bit more Oh, actually, just before I uh, jump on and ride her some more, let's uh, use this opportunity to see what she's like from a turning circle point of view. Getting her off the stand, yeah, it does feel a little bit weighty, but certainly nowhere near as weighty as, say, my GS. A uh, turning circle seems quite tight, actually. Uh, stalky old stand. I really don't want to be dropping this. Let's go like that. Scrapey, scrapey on the stand. So I didn't get all the way around in that uh, sort of normal road width, but it does seem like quite a good turning circle, to be fair. I've certainly uh, ridden bikes with much lesser turning circles, so no problem there. Right, back on we go then. Let's bring this baby back to life. Here we go. Good morning rider, it says on there. I've got a feeling that that's a uh, customizable the little welcome message, but we'll see. Sounds really nice, isn't she? Alrighty, let's head this way uh, up towards Burkhamsted, my uh, favourite little bike test route here in uh, the Hamel Hempstead area now, because it's got a bit of everything. There's a little bit of town to go through, so I can see what it's like in traffic, hopefully. I must just take this uh, opportunity to thank uh, the guys up at Hearts Triumph once again for letting me borrow one of their bikes. Do check them out, go and see Ben or Toby if you want to ride on this very bike, I'm sure they'll sort that out for you. Oh, must just turn my heat grips back on again. There we go. Heat grips are really effective on here. It is an option, by the way, the heat grips on here. And you turn them on, if you didn't know, by the little button actually on the grip itself. So it's quite neat. Can be quite difficult to find in gloves. I've not had a problem in these particular gloves, but uh, I can imagine if you've got some really hefty ones, it might be. Yeah, I do like this uh, presentation on the display. I like the fact that you've got a hand sweeping rather than just numbers. I guess I'm just old school. I like the fact that it's got all that connectivity and navigation and so on built in if you want it. But all that said, I think me personally, I'd rather it had the two dials that you've got on the Thruxton and, ha and not had the TFT. I realise that bikes are going TFT these days, it's the modern way. But I don't know, I think I'm going to kind of miss the old dials. Give it 10 years time and all bikes we're riding have got TFTs. And I'm going to be yearning for the old steam gauges. The tyres on here look quite off-roady. I mean, they're not. They're more on-road than off-road, but they've got... To, I don't know what sort of tyres they are. I forgot to look, unfortunately. But they absolutely look the part on the bike. But they handle great on the road here. As I say, it's a fairly cold day and the roads are a little bit damp, so I'm not going to be absolutely thrashing it around, but... Uh, you don't feel like you're on knobblies at all. Did I mention the clutch is nice and light on here? So I think uh, if this bike was mine or I was getting one of these, the only other thing I'd probably look to change if you can is this uh, brake fluid reservoir. It's not as cheap as nasty as some of those little white plastic ones that you used to get on tramps, but uh, let's check what's happening behind. Cheerio. 
but yeah, I think I'll replace that with the anodized version. Other than that and the stalky mirrors, it's not really anything I can think about this bike that I don't like on this uh, first ride. I'm yet to take it on a really fast road, we'll do that in a minute. And I'm yet to take it through town, so we'll see what that throws up. But uh, at the moment, yeah, really liking this. I really like the uh, street scramble when I rode that about a year ago. Also a beautiful bike, but this one for me has it on the styling, it just looks nicer. Comes in a couple of colours by the way, this the XZ version, you can get it in this uh, white and green or you can get it in a blue and gold. Uh, I think I might prefer the blue and gold, but both very nice paint schemes. Alrighty, let me get up to uh, Burke Hampstead and we'll uh, take it through town, see what she's like in traffic. So very nice in town actually, there's no, uh, there's no jerkiness at slow speed on here, it's lovely and smooth the fueling. And because you're nice and tall, You've got great, uh, great visibility to see what's happening traffic-wise. And uh, because it is physically a large bike, great road presence as well, particularly these additional lights on as well, as I mentioned before. Good leverage on the big bars with that, uh, combined with that good turning circle. Yeah, pretty good in-town bike, I'd say. Nice landy. It's always busy through here. Alrighty, let's go and uh, find a faster road and check out that wind blast. Actually, just as I'm wending my way up uh, towards the A41, a faster road, I'll just pop her into sport mode. And a uh, couple of things leap out when I did that. One is, uh, I'm now stuck behind a van, but that's by the by. Next thing is uh, the little joystick. Actually, I find it a little bit fiddly, to be fair, to be using that. It's quite intuitive the way you use the uh, the setup, but it's a bit of a bit of a faff with that joystick. But that's the same with all the trucks that use these joysticks. Not the best controller. I'm trying to find things that I don't like about the bike, so the joystick a little bit fiddly. But the great thing about putting it into sports mode, my goodness me, it really makes the livens the bike up. It has transformed it into an absolute beast. Now it was no slouch before, but uh, yeah, it really really does hustle now. One of the criticisms I sometimes have about uh, bikes with riding modes is you can't really tell too much difference between them. But that is not the case on this bike. It's completely transformed. Even on these slower urban roads, I can tell it's just much more eager to go now. So uh, I'm leaving her in sports mode. Right, so here I am on the A41 and dual carriageway, a faster road. Just wanted to see what it's like, the wind blast on the bike to simulate if you were going on tour and you had to get places on these sorts of roads. Well, as I mentioned before, the airflow is quite strong. I mean, right into the uh, into the shoulders and chest, as you'd expect. It's got a small front layer on the box, so you're not protected at all. But it is clean airflow. So you have to hang on. I'm doing an indicated 81 miles an hour at the moment, just keeping up with traffic here. And I'm having, having to hold on a bit, so... Uh, Bear that in mind, if you've been getting one of these bikes uh, with the intent on going touring, you could of course do it, but uh, you're going to be holding on on the wind blast. If you go on an autobahn, you're going to have some fun. Okay, so my time with the uh, Scrambler 1200 XE is almost done, so I come back into Hemel Hempstead. What are my sort of final thoughts about the bike? Is it everything I'd hoped? Well, in a nutshell, yes it is. It's got a really plush ride actually and it goes really well, particularly in sports mode. And I think the styling, it's styling is spot on. It's uh, the best looking Scrambler I've ridden yet. And I think now it takes the crown as the best Bonneville style bike that I've ridden on. It is tall, but it's not so tall that people like me of shorter stature at five foot eight can't get their, you know, can't use it. It doesn't feel heavy, doesn't feel top heavy, anything like that. It doesn't feel like as I'm stuck here at the world's worst traffic lights that I'm gonna drop the bike anytime soon. Uh, if I'm clashing at straws for things I don't like, stalky mirrors, easily changed. They work well, but I just don't like the look of them. I find the joystick a little bit fiddly for changing the various settings on the TFT. And if I'm honest, uh, even though the TFT is laden with uh, new connectivity options, I think I'd rather this particular bike had the two chrome dials like the Thruxton has, just because it's more in keeping with the style I think. But though I am really nitpicking there because overall it is a lovely bike to ride, handles beautifully, it goes really well, it sounds lovely and it looks lovely. If you're in the market for a, a Scrambler style bike and you've got 13 and a half grand spare, then I thoroughly recommend you uh, look 
carefully at the Scrambler 1200. It's a beautiful, beautiful bike. So uh, thanks again to Heartstrike for letting me uh, ride the bike. Really enjoyed that. This is the uh, first time you've uh, been to my channel. Thanks very much for watching. Great to have you along. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I don't just do bike reviews here on the Missing and Fly, but I do all sorts of things in the garage to do with bike maintenance. I do trips and tours. I do the odd live stream. I do uh, look at the bike news. Basically anything and everything to do with motorcycles, I try and cover it here on the Missing and Fly. It'd be great to have you along. All right, thanks for watching it. Watching. <laughs> That's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.